Hey guys, I pray you're blessed today. I think the storms have passed. It was thundering a lot just a few minutes ago and pouring down rain, but I think maybe it's passing. It was just like a, a pop-up shower storm. But there's a lot that is going on right now, guys. And keep your eyes focused on Jesus. No matter what you hear, no matter what you see, no matter what you feel, you keep your eyes on Jesus and you focus on him because he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. I believe what's fixing to happen is going to separate the sheep from the goats. And we already see it happening now. But I believe what's coming, it's definitely going to separate the sheep from the goats. Those that are truly in Christ and those that are just playing. Now is not a time to play. It should never be a time to play, but definitely now is not a time to play. Jesus is coming. And if you don't know Jesus, you are going to be left behind for the worst seven years in humanity's history. I am telling you, World War III is about to erupt. And it's coming to America. I truly do believe that. So many of us have had nuclear dreams. Nuclear rapture dreams. And I'm one of them. I've had two of them, to be matter of fact. One of them... I'm not quite for sure if it was a nuclear bomb or not, but if it wasn't, it was definitely something devastating that happened to, to the world. But in my spirit, in my heart, heart of hearts, I believe that it's nuclear. And I might get censored for this because I'm saying that word a lot. I don't know, and honestly, frankly, I just don't care. I, I am not here to, to appease man. I'm here to, to warn people. I am here to tell people to wake up because Jesus is coming back. And I really don't care if you think I'm crazy or not. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I could really care less what you think of me. My job here is to warn people. My job here is to give people hope. But if you're not found in Christ, there's no hope in what I'm telling you. Because what I'm telling you, if you weren't found in Christ, is downright scary. We are on the brink of war. And it ain't going to be pretty. It's not going to be mess free. And we might not see the main event. Because I do believe that this is going to lead into the second Second horseman, which is the which is war. But I do believe that we are gonna see, and we already are seeing a lot of preludes to this. And we know, of course, before the second horse can come, the first first horse has to come, and that's the Antichrist, and he can't be revealed until we're raptured. So we're close to going home. The weather is crazy. We're having tornadoes like crazy. Strong tornadoes. And yes, I know this is tornado season. But I've never seen a season like this. I mean, this has been from the start, from the get-go, just crazy. We are seeing tornadoes behaving oddly, which I know they don't have a set behavior it's not like they're you know a living organism but normally tornadoes don't go backwards they they tornadoes have basically a set way they they are and that's usually the way they they tend to go and they're massive very destructive and tonight, I think it's Oklahoma City is on a rare alert for very, very, very bad weather. <clears throat> Not to mention all the flooding that is going on. There's flooding in Texas. There's flooding in 
Brazil. There's flooding in Saudi Arabia. There's earthquakes happening everywhere. I think Indonesia had a 6.2 today. They just keep going off. These earthquakes just keep going off. And then we have volcanoes that are coming a lot back to life. We have eruptions. Everything is groaning in birth pains. And we see these birth pains picking up. And we are very, 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 very close to the tribulation. But before the tribulation can come, the rapture has to happen. But if you don't know Jesus, it's time for you to decide who you're going to serve. The little lowercase g God of this world or the one true God, Yahweh, the God of Israel. Who are you going to serve? Things are heating up rapidly. And there has definitely been a shifting in the spirit. You can feel it. It's, it's tangible almost. The, the spiritual warfare is off the charts. It's just, it's non-stop now. It's always something. Something is always happening. People are worn out mentally, physically, spiritually. Everywhere I turn around, people are exhausted. They're being battled in multiple ways. Whether it's through their marriage, through their family relationships, through their finances, through their health, through the health of their family. There's so many things that are going on and people are just battle weary. But keep holding on. I wanted to read a couple of things to you. This is a, um, a prayer. It's called the Warrior's Prayer. And I wanted to read this to you real quick. Heavenly Father. Sorry, that was shocking. <laughs> Heavenly Father, your warrior prepares for battle. Today I claim victory over Satan by putting on the whole armor of God. I put on the girdle of truth. May I stand firm in the truth of your word so I will not be a victim of Satan's lies. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. May it guard my heart from evil so I will remain pure and holy, protected under the blood of Jesus Christ. I put on the shoes of peace. May I stand firm in the good news of the gospel so your peace will shine through me and be a light to all I encounter. I take the shield of faith. May I be ready for Satan's fiery darts of doubt, denial, and deceit. So I will not be vulnerable to spiritual defeat. I put on the helmet of salvation. May I keep my mind focused on you. So Satan will not have a stronghold on my thoughts. I take the sword of the spirit. May the two-edged sword of your word be ready in my hand. So I can expose the tempting words of Satan. By, your, by faith, your warrior has put on the whole armor of God. I am prepared to live this day in spiritual victory. Amen. You know, we have got to have the armor on. Every day, all day. You've got to be in your word. You have got to be in your word. That is your sword from which you battle the enemy. When he comes at you with fear, you get in here and you read scriptures that talk about how we are not to fear. We, When we have doubts of our salvation, we get in here and we read that we are secure in our salvation and how nothing can take us out of the hand of God. There, You get in there and you read your word and you combat the enemy with the word. You get on your knees and you pray. And you praise God. Praise pushes back the darkness. Even when you don't feel like praising them, praise them. Even when it hurts, praise them. Even when you've got tears and snot falling down everywhere, you praise him. Even when you don't think you can, you praise him. Praise him for he is good and he is worthy of praise. I wouldn't be here today if it was not for God. I don't know where I'd be, but it would not be anywhere good. It could even be six feet under. Jesus saved me in more ways than one. First and foremost, he saved my soul. He saved my life. He saved me in every shape 
and form that I could ever think of. He saved me from a horrible, mentally abusive marriage. And then he gave me a wonderful husband after my divorce was finalized. And I had nine wonderful years with a godly man. And even though I lost him, he's not truly lost. He's at home waiting on me. And I know things are not going to be the same. They're going to be better. I can't tell you in what ways. But if you're missing a spouse or you're missing a child and they were found in Christ, you're missing a parent, a sibling, a friend. You're missing someone you love. And they were found in Christ. Know that our relationships, I do believe, in heaven are going to be far more richer than they ever were here on earth. We have so much to look forward to. And not only that, but just think we are going to be with Jesus for eternity. That and alone is just enough to make me want to cry. Knowing that we are going to be with our Lord and our Savior for all eternity. We're going to get to do things that we could never do in these limited bodies. We are going to have amazing adventures with each other, with Jesus, with those we love the most. We are going to have a wonderful time and it will never end. You know, here on this earth, everything is temporal. But in heaven, everything is eternal. And so that's why we have to have our eyes on things that are eternal and not things that are temporal. Because if you're looking at things that are temporal, you're going to be let down. I had told you all a few, uh, a few weeks back how I was hoping and praying to be able to get a tiny house. Well, we just found out because of codes, the property's too small. So we can't get a tiny house and houses are extremely expensive right now and so it's like we have went through every viable option that we can think of you know rent i can't rent i don't make enough to rent i want it to buy outright because rent can be even more expensive than buying a house a lot of places around here are are close to two thousand dollars if not more I've seen houses for rent for six thousand three thousand it's just bizarre I don't know who can afford it unless you're rich a lot of us are between a rock and a hard place and I know a lot of you all have it worse than what I do and I'm definitely not grumbling or complaining about my situation I am blessed and I am too blessed to be stressed you know, I'm not going to lie, when I first found out I couldn't have a tiny home, I was a little discouraged, but I know God's got me, just as he's got you. And sometimes our plans don't go according to what we want it, but I'm not going to lie, on the way home, because Dad went to go by to see about the codes today, I already had my answer. I knew in my spirit that it was a no. And I thought, okay, God, I don't know what your plans are, but I trust you. You know, obviously you want me here with my parents right where I'm at. And I believe that we're going home. I truly do. And it's not just because I've not gotten a home. But the Lord did tell me, I know, I felt it in my spirit, that the house that I am in will be the house that I will be raptured in. I haven't gotten a house yet. I truly believe this is where I'm going to be raptured at, is here in my parents' house, and I'm perfectly a-okay with that. You know, we have to learn that even when things don't go according to our plans, that God has good plans for us. And the things that he has in store for those that love him, we can't even wrap our minds around them, the plans that he has. And, you know... The plans that he has might not even include here in the now. It could be in the near future when we're in heaven or when we're in the millennial reign or we're in the new heaven, the new earth. We have so much to look forward to. 
So don't be discouraged when things don't go your way. Because we are going home. And like I told you all, our soon and God's soon is two different things. But I truly do believe that at any second now, we're going home. I truly believe that. Keep looking up and don't let people discourage you. Don't let life discourage you. Don't let your life events discourage you. You know, I have a, a dear sister and my best friend. She just lost her brother Sunday. And my heart grieves for her because I want to be up there with her at the funeral. And I can't do that because it's five hours away, four or five hours away. And I have to work this week. I can't just take off. I wish I could. I would go up there to be with her in a heartbeat because she was there for me when Anthony died. And it's not even so much about that. But it's just when you see someone you love hurting, you hurt with them. We're all one body. We're the body of Christ. And when the Bible says when one hurts, we all hurt. When one celebrates, we all celebrate. We're, su we're supposed, we don't cheer when people go through hard times. We pray for them. We rally around them. We love on them. We don't cry when people are going through good times unless they're happy tears. But we don't, you know, and I've sadly, I've met people like that who, who rejoice Almost like they rejoice when people are going through hard times. And then they really don't have anything good to say when someone's having something good happen in their lives. I, I just don't understand people like that. It's like, where's your empathy? Where's your love for your fellow, fellow brethren? Don't be like that. If you know someone that is hurting, you go to them and you pray for them and you love on them. And you let them know that you care. You don't relish in their pain. That's just sick. But everything within my spirit cries out that we are going home soon. I feel in every fiber of my being that we're going home. And I believe that's why every time I'm hearing a sound, it's like, oh, that's a trumpet. And I get so excited because it's like... I. I, I feel in my spirit it's literally that close that any second now is going to be that day that we're going home. Any any moment that trumpet's going to sound and we're going to fly. Don't lose focus and don't lose hope. Keep your eyes on Jesus. No matter what it looks like, no matter how you feel, don't lose hope. Like I said, guys, there's a whole lot going on. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. And God had spoken into my spirit about a year ago, and he told me, I'm about to shake the very foundations of the, of the earth, of the nations, and it's going to do one of two things. It's going to draw people to me, or it's going to draw them away, and they are going to shake their fist up at me, and they're going to curse me. And it reminded me of Revelation when even after all of this had befallen them, the boils, the scorching sun, they would, they would raise their fist at God and curse God and refuse to repent. That's scary. That is scary. But see, these people are the ones that are going to get the mark. They're not going to be redeemable. And that might sound harsh, but it's the harsh truth. Those that get the mark, forehead or right hand, won't be redeemable. It does something to them. It changes them. And they're no longer redeemable. Nobody can force you, if you have not accepted Jesus yet, nobody can force you to, to place your faith and trust in him and believe in what he did on the cross 
Nobody can do that for you. Only you can. But if you don't know Jesus, I don't have any other hope for you but to share the gospel with you. And what you do with the gospel is between you and God. But Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he laid his life down for you willingly. Laid it down for you so that you could live and you could live for eternity with him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 tells us if we believe just as the scriptures say that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, that he was buried, and on the third day he rose again. If you believe that, if you truly believe that, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9 tells us that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God and we believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we're going to, you will be saved, you know, and it's a gift. It's a free gift. We get it through grace by faith. So no one can boast in themselves. It's a free gift from God. You can't boast it can't boast in it well I did this to earn my salvation and I did that to keep it no it's a free gift free means free you did nothing to earn it you did nothing to deserve it quit relying on your self-righteous works to get you into heaven because it won't work Yes, works are good. When you love the Lord, you want to serve Him. You want to do things for Him. But you don't do it for salvation. Salvation is a free gift. Don't let anyone tell you that you have to earn your salvation by doing 10 steps or repenting and turning from your sins. Repent means a change of mind. So don't let anyone tell you you have to turn from your sins. Because if you could turn from your own sins, then Jesus died in vain. I wanted to read this to you all real quick. This is Hebrews 9, 24 through... Yeah, 24. Okay. 24 through 28. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. He then would have to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Amen. Jesus died once. Once for all sin. He, he's not up on that cross every time you sin. He died once for all sin. So many people want to think, you know, yeah, I believe in saying, I, I believe, I say it all the time, Lord, I'm sorry. It's like any other relationship. If you keep hurting the one you, you love, it's going to put a rift between you and your relationship. When I do something, when I mess up, when I would mess up in my marriage with Anthony, and I would do something that I know hurt him, I would say, I'm sorry, baby. That was wrong of me to say that or do that. And I, I, I apologize. And I, I, I hope you forgive me. And of course, baby, there's nothing to forgive. But you know, when I go to the Lord, when I do something, I'm like, Lord, I'm sorry. Jesus, I'm sorry. I can't, I cannot do this without you. I need your help. 
I need your strength. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that was poured out on the cross. I don't beat myself up. I don't let, I try not to let the enemy beat me up. Every once in a while, he'll get a good kick at me, and then I have to remember no, I'm secure. I'm safe. The Lord has me. Yes, I make mistakes. I fall. I slip. I stumble. But it's okay. I get back up. I dust myself off. I get chastised sometimes. Put my tail between my legs. But the Lord, when he chastises, he chastises those he loves. It's just like when you have a child and you, you get on to them for doing something wrong. That's how the Lord is. You know, when he doesn't do it in anger or hate or malice. He does it because he loves us. <sighs> Quit beating yourself up every time you stumble. Quit letting the enemy beat you up. Quit letting other people beat you up. Nobody, nobody is perfect. And if they are, then they're in delusional land because nobody in this flesh is perfect. We all fall short of the glory of God. None are righteous. No, not one. We are made righteous through Jesus Christ, through what he did on the cross, not of our own self. Our righteousness is as filthy rags in God's sight. It's stench in his nostrils. You know, and I heard some, there was a lady on, and I had to, I had to just, the Holy Spirit really had to get a hold of me and just say, walk away and pray for them. This lady was getting on there and calling Israel the synagogue of Satan and blasting Israel and basically saying that Netanyahu was comparing him to Hitler. And it just, it made me sick to my stomach because this lady claimed to be a Christian, but then she started talking about the law and how, you know, we're still under the law. And I'm like, no, we're not. I'm not. You might be, but I'm not. But it was sad because she had a, a whole gaggle of geese following behind her, just quacking what she was, honking what, what she was saying, agreeing with her. You know, Jesus tells us that if we, if we do not obey all Ten Commandments and we've, we've sinned against one of those Ten Commandments, if we've, if we've broken one of them, then we've broken all of them. You know, honor your mother and father. Put no other gods before me. All of these Ten Commandments, I, I, I know them, I just can't think of them all the top of my head right now. Sorry about that, I'll post them in here. <laughs> but, you know, if you've, if you've broken one, you've broken them all. We're not under the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law. He did not do away with it. He fulfilled it because the law was never meant to save. It was never capable of saving. It was only designed to show the need of a Savior. And that Savior was Jesus Christ, Yeshua. But the law was never meant to to save it couldn't save I mean it was a taskmaster nobody could keep the law and then they kept adding to the laws you know you have the Ten Commandments and then they kept adding all of these different laws besides the law of Moses they kept adding and by the time they were done I think there was 630 like 630 something like that laws that they had made <laughs> I can't keep the, the, the ten. You know, how many of us have coveted? How many of us have, have stolen something, have lied, have put things before God, whether we mean to or not? 
How many of us have honored our parents? How many of us have dishonored our parents? I know sometimes I can get a little mouthy and I have to I have to remember that that's my mama and she's still, you know, she can still beat me up. Take her flip flop off and knock me in the head. Knock my teeth out. You know, if you've disobeyed one, if you've not kept one, then you've not kept any of them. We're not under the law. And that just made me so sick. Not only to see her talk about Israel the way she did, like they were the synagogue of Satan, but also to hear her talk about how we're still under the law. And we're not. I don't want to be under the law. And that's what the writer of Hebrews was talking about in Hebrews 10 when he was telling them, you know, you've come to a saving grace through Jesus Christ. Don't go back under the old covenant. Don't go back under, under the law. Because you know what Jesus did for you on the cross. Don't go back to sacrificing animals. Because you're, you're trampling all over the blood of Jesus when you do that. Animal sacrifices cannot save you. They cannot forgive you of your sins. You know, and this was a yearly thing that had to be done on a yearly basis. And it was a whole entire ritual. The priests, they had to cleanse themselves. They had to, they had to slaughter an animal for the forgiveness of their sins. And then they slaughtered an animal for, the, for Israel. And then they had to go sprinkle the, the blood on the mercy seat. On the, it was a whole entire ritual. And if that priest was not clean, if he, was, if he had not cleansed himself properly... God would strike him dead right then and there. And he had to have a cord wrapped around his ankle. And it had little bells on it. And if those little bells stopped jingling and there was no movement to the cord, the, the priest, the Levite priest, they couldn't go into the holies of holies. Only the high priest could. And they'd have to pull this now dead high priest out by this cord and... Reel them out because if they stepped foot in there, they would be struck dead. No one was permitted but the high priest. So when Jesus died on the cross, that veil was split down top to bottom, signifying that there was no longer a veil, a covering between God and us, that we didn't need a high priest to go in there and offer sacrifices on our behalf for the forgiveness of the sins. And see, like I said, these were never able to, to forgive. It was, it was symbolic of what Jesus was going to do. Jesus is our high priest. And he has shown himself that he has made the sacrifice to the Father. He has shown himself. And now... He is interceding for us on our behalf. When you realize what Jesus did for you, it makes you so grateful and so thankful because he paid a price <laughs> that was very, very hefty. And he didn't have to do it, but he did because he loved us. You know, he loved us while we were still sinners. And we weren't born when, when Jesus died on the cross. But he died for us. Even though we were not yet alive. He died for all sin. All sins of everyone. Past, present, and future. I know these times are hard. Keep holding on. Things are really heating up out there. And we know that normal's not coming back, but Jesus is. 
and each day brings us closer to home. I can't give you a date. We know we're in the season. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. But guys, I love you all so much. I really do. And we're going to get through this together. And one day very soon, we're going to be walking down the streets of gold together. We're going to be singing praises to God together and just sitting at the feet of Jesus and just gleaning from him. We're going to be eating at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going to be at the, the Bema seat getting our rewards and placing our crowns at Jesus' feet. For he is so worthy of them. You know, he is... He is everything. And without Jesus... You wouldn't go to heaven. You wouldn't be forgiven of your sins. So you could go to heaven. Don't forget to place your prayer requests in the comment section. And if you need to privately email me, my email is in the description box. So please feel free to email me. I love you all. Bye. I will talk to you all soon. All right, God bless you. Bye.